Today we're setting up Webinarly on Oracle's free tier. Now the reason I am using Webinarly, this is a free method and it works very well with Oracle's Ampere ARM processors. So in the Oracle free tier, you get access to four virtual CPUs and 24 gigabytes of RAM. You can take full advantage of those free resources with an optimized Nginx setup. So you can run WordPress very well with this Nginx setup. You can run other apps as well through Node, Java, uh, React, um, whatever you like. You can easily add multiple websites too. Uh, this is all for free. So free hosting and the free setup through Webinarly. Um, excellent, excellent performance. Obviously, this is going to outperform a lot of paid hosting. So things like Bluehost, uh, HostGator, GoDaddy, those mainstream hosts are nowhere near as fast as what you can get uh, for free. But this is obviously not for newbies. This is a little bit harder um, than previous tutorials on the channel, but don't worry. I'll share every command line that I used and I'll share them on my blog at ideaspot.com.au. So you just have to copy and paste things as we go through and you'll get a very powerful server set up with this method and it's all for free. All right. So as I said, every step is going to be documented on ideaspot.com.au. So head over there and you can just copy and paste. If this method is a little bit too tricky, check the previous method using AA panel and Apache. That's pretty easy to do. Um, also, I've got a previous method using Cyber Panel and Open Lights, but it doesn't work with the Ampere ARM processors. You have to use Micro AMD. So not as much uh, RAM and not as much processing power. But if you like Cyber Panel, you can use that one. And again, if all this is a little bit too hard and you want something um, managed, you can get managed WordPress hosting on Cloudways, three-day free trial there, and also Vulture. If you don't want to touch the command line, you can get free Plesk through Vulture, completely graphic interface and 30-day free trial, very good performance as well. I can recommend that one. But otherwise, if we want that always free tier with the four CPUs, let's get started on this Oracle Webinarly setup. So let's get started. All right, so this is going to follow the instructions on webinly.com through their uh, quick setup guide here. So you've got the basics of how to set up uh, web pages and other apps. So WordPress is very simple to set up through here. The only change I'm going to do is they give you an option of setting up Let's Encrypt SSL automatically with one command. You can do that. Or what I'm going to show you later in the tutorial is using Cloudflare SSL. So I'm going to show you how to upload Cloudflare SSL certificates. You can run it all through Cloudflare and get even more power and performance. So overall, I'd say this method is going to be the most powerful free hosting you can possibly find online at the moment. So very excited to share this with you guys. Let's go ahead and log into our Oracle dashboard and get started. First, let's create a VM instance. For this demo, let's call it Webinarly. The image and shape we'll use is Ubuntu 20.04 and we want to use an Ampere instance. So let's change those. So we want canonical Ubuntu 20.04, that's in the Webinarly documentation. Use this version and for the shape, let's go with the Ampere. Now we can go with up to uh, 24 gigabyte RAM and uh, four Oracle CPUs. So, I mean, let's just go the full, full maximum. You can go with this always free on Oracle. So that is your limit in the always free tier. You can see there it says always free eligible. So let's select that one. There we go and click that. And then basically everything else is default. We can use an SSH key. I'm just going to paste a SSH key in here. I use putty. Uh, to do my SSH keys in Windows, but you can use whichever software you like. I use Putty Gen to generate a key. I'll link in the tutorial um, description, uh, previous tutorial where I do that, but I'm just gonna paste my key in here. So it'll look something like this. I'll paste it in, it'll look like that. And everything else is default. I can click create now. So it'll say provisioning. We just wait for um, our IP address to be created here. As soon as we've got an IP address, let's go ahead and point our domain over to this IP address. So let's click copy there. So for this demo, I'm managing ideaspot.site through Namecheap, but wherever you bought your domain is going to be very similar. So I am in my domain list. I'm under advanced DNS. You just have to find your DNS management and add an A record and a C name record. So first A record points to at, point to your IP address and click tick there. Um, same with a C name record. We want to go C name and www and we point that to ideaspot site. There we go. And Save that in with a green tick. All right, by now your instance should be running. So we can go ahead and connect to our IP address and uh, our username is gonna be Ubuntu. So let's go ahead and do that. 
So let's put that username and password in here. So Ubuntu at the IP address. I'm going to save this as Webinarly and click save here. And we also want to find our SSH key. So we want to add that under SSH auth there. Let's uh, browse for that. And let's get our key again. I'll link in the description uh, where I've generated an SSH key and putty if you want to learn how to do that as well. Um, so back here, we'll go there and save that in. Now we should be able to connect to this instance. So here we go. Looks all good. And that's basically just a case of following our Webinarly install uh, example and uh, setting up our website with WordPress. Before we install, let's do a quick server update and upgrade. So um, sudo apt update, update and sudo apt upgrade. So just let this run. If you get prompts, we press yes here. And just let it go. So that took about a minute. Now we want to install Webinarly. So the first thing I'll do is just change to sudo. So sudo dash i, that'll uh, change us over to the root user. We can enter our install commands here. Now we go ahead and install Webinarly with this command. So go ahead and paste that in, press enter. Again, just go ahead and be patient while Webinarly installs here. That'll take a minute or so. So that took about five minutes. It'll give you a green success message here. It does say save your database access and password it in a secure place. So I'm gonna highlight that and save it. So there we go, I'll just save that. So now let's head back to Oracle. We do need to open up some ports in the Oracle firewall. So we go to our virtual cloud network here and click on the subnet there. And we've got our default security list there. So we're gonna add some ingress rules here. So our source CIDR is uh, 0.0.0.0, .0 and the destination ports are going to be 80, 888, uh, 48, 443, 20, and 21. They're separated by commas, so just paste those in there. For a description, you can put anything you want. I'll put Webinarly there, and then we go ahead and click Add. So that will add our Webinarly rules in here. In Ubuntu, it's pretty similar. We add those same port numbers to our IP table. So I'm gonna paste this command in. Again, I'll share this on my blog, but we're gonna add the um, port 80 to the IP table. And I'm gonna repeat that for the other ports as well. So that was six commands to add those six uh, ports to our IP tables. And then we can save those in. In case we need to reboot our server, our IP tables will be saved. So there we go. We can actually list our IP tables and look at them with IP tables uh, dash L. The formatting is a bit messed up because I increased the font size for the video, but if I scroll up, you can kind of see, there we go, we've got our, our ports in there that we just added. So that's all good. We can actually install a WordPress website now. So let's go ahead and do that. So to install a Webinarly site with WordPress, we go site, I'm gonna use ideaspot.site, that's my domain, um, dash WP and cache on. So that's Nginx uh, full page caching. Let's press enter there. It will uh, install WordPress. There we go. Yes, site ideaspot has been successfully created. So that looks all good. Now Webinarly actually protects the WordPress admin folder by HTTP auth. So we need to add an HTTP auth user. So I'm gonna say HTTP auth and add. It'll prompt us to add a username. I'm gonna be Ideaspot for this demo and a password. So paste a nice password in there. And there we go. So now we should be able to head over to Ideaspot site and go to the WordPress admin folder and do the WordPress uh, install script. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's open an incognito window here and we're gonna to go to that site. So HTTP ideaspot.site slash WP admin. Make sure it's not HTTPS because we don't have SSL installed yet. Because I've been using ideaspot.site on previous tutorials, I'm gonna use incognito here because otherwise it will try to go to HTTPS. So if you have that problem, um, use an incognito window and there we go. It'll be prompted for our HTTP auth uh, login here. So that's the uh, username and password we just created. So sign in with those. Now we can install WordPress. Now we just go ahead and fill in that form and go ahead and click install. And now we can log in. There we go. So now WordPress is up and running here. We don't have SSL. So that's our next step is to put SSL on here. There's a couple ways of doing that. The first and the easiest way is to use their example uh, with Let's Encrypt. So that's just one command here. Um, uh, they use the site and SSL on and you get a Let's Encrypt certificate. So that'll work. Uh, just find it and you can pretty much finish the tutorial at that point after you install that Let's Encrypt certificate. 
So you can do it like that and that pretty much wraps it up. The other thing you can do is use your own SSL certificate. So in this case, I'd like to use a Cloudflare SSL because I want to run all this through Cloudflare. I think that will be a bit better, a little bit more um, performance. So I'm going to add my own Cloudflare SSL certificate with this command in their documentation. They've got under sites how to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. So this is a little bit more complicated. If you just want to keep it simple, just use that one. But I'm going to go ahead with this process. So let's uh, get started on that. So before we can do that, we have to add our domain to Cloudflare and then we have to get our certificates for the key, the certificate and the origin pool certificate from Cloudflare. So I'm going to show you how to do all of that. If you don't have a Cloudflare account, you can get one for free at cloudflare.com. Um, but otherwise, I'm in my dashboard. I'm going to add a site to Cloudflare. So I'm using idspot.site, click add. And we go for the free option here, as we always do on the channel, and click continue. That's going to import our DNS records. We can click continue here. And now we have to change our name server. So at the moment, we're in Namecheap. We're going to change over to this Cloudflare name server. So let's copy the first one there. So I should do this in Namecheap. We've got name servers here, but you just have to find your name server option. Um, we have to change it to custom DNS. And let's paste that first one in there. Let's head back and grab that second name server. There we go. And paste that in there. And click the tick. Again, I'm using Namecheap, but GoDaddy or um, Google Domains or whatever is pretty similar. We just pop uh, custom DNS servers in there. Now, whenever you change DNS servers, it does take a while. I think it's probably take half an hour. So let's head over to What's My DNS and just, uh, you can keep an eye on the progress. So just over at whatsmydns.net, pop your domain name in there, click search. So at the moment, it's hitting our server IP address. After about half an hour, that will change to a Cloudflare IP address. So just be patient, um, have a cup of coffee or tea and come back. Over on Cloudflare, I did finish changing those name servers over so I can click done and check name servers. And so that looks okay. If I head back to the dash, it'll probably say pending. Um, so there we go. Um, idea spot site is pending name server update. So just be patient. Uh, this does take a little while. All right. So I've been waiting about half an hour. If I search here again, we should get the Cloudflare IP. So we can see the IP addresses have changed. We should be good to go here. So we're going to need to create three files and uh, it's recommended that they put them in this etc. nginx certs folder. So we're going to make this folder on our server. So we make directory as that. There we go. And the first file I'll create is the Cloudflare origin. So that's cert.pem. So I'm going to create that one with nano on my um, server. So I just have to paste the certificate in here. So you can get Cloudflare's origin certificate at this link. I'll share that in the description. Um, the certificate value is here. We just have to copy that and paste that into Nano. So I'm just going to right click and paste that into our server here and uh, control X to exit there. Uh, y for yes and um, file name to write that will write our cert PEM file there. So that looks all good. Now our domain certificate and key, we can get that from our Cloudflare dashboard. So we can see we've got our domain here, it's active. And we're going to go to SSL here and we've got origin server here and we can actually go ahead and create a certificate here. So let's click create. And here we've got our certificate and our private key. So let's start with the certificate. Um, we'll do that one first. Again, we'll need to create our certificate file on our server. So that's nano and we're going to use cert.crt for this one. And we're going to grab that certificate from Cloudflare. So let's go ahead and copy that certificate. And then we can paste that in there to our server. Um, control X to exit there and uh, Y for yes. And enter to save the cert file there. So that looks all good. The last one is the key. So I'm going to use cert.key for this one. Press enter and we're going to paste that key in here. So that is private key. We're going to copy that with that link there. Again, back in putty, it's right click to paste and to exit here, we press control X. It'll ask to save, we press Y for yes and enter to save our cert key. So that looks all good. Now, in theory, we should be able to use this command for our custom cert. We just need to change example.com to ideaspot.site in this case, but um, we've got our cert key, our certificate and our origin certificate all set up here. So back in Putty, we use that command. We've changed it to ideaspot.site and let's press enter. 
So I've got a green success. A custom SSL cert has been successfully enabled on IdeaSpot's site. So that looks all good. Um, back in Cloudflare, we can go back to our Cloudflare. Um, we want to go to Origin Server here. So that looks all good. We've got our new certificate in here. And we want to go to uh, SSL here. We can change that to full strict. It might be on flexible by default. So make sure that's set to full strict here since we've got our certificates all installed. The other thing worth doing is I think under edge certificates, we can change that to always use HTTPS, change that to a tick. So that looks all good. Great, now when I head over to ideaspot.site, I can see I've got my secure SSL is all set up here. I can log back into our dashboard here. Let's go to settings, um, general year. Let's update this to HTTPS in our WordPress settings and save that in. We'll have to log back in again. And that looks all good. From here, we can build a site or import a site or um, whatever with WordPress. I'm gonna go ahead and put a demo site on here and do some testing. So I've gone ahead and installed the cadence theme and just installed a quick starter template site here so we can do some testing. The other thing we can do is under our plugins, we've got installed plugins. They gave us Hello Dolly and Akismet. I've gone ahead and deleted those. We've also got Nginx Helper and Redis Object Cache. We can activate these ones. So first let's activate Nginx Helper. All that does is automatically uh, flush the cache every time you update pages and posts. So that one's all done. And then we've got Redis Object Cache. Let's go ahead and activate that one. We just need to click enable object cache there. And that looks all good. And under Nginx helper settings, we click settings there and we want to enable purge. Nginx fast is your caching, caching method. I'd use that one in most cases. There may be some cases where you wanna use the Redis caching method. If you've got like WooCommerce, a lot of products, a lot of um, shopping cart action, use the Redis method. But I think for blogs uh, and most static websites, you want to use the Nginx fast CGI caching method. So I'm going to use that one here. And I think we're pretty good to go. Click save there. Now running this through Google PageSpeed Insights, we're getting really good scores here. 100 on mobile, we're getting that largest contentful paint in only 1.7 seconds. So that's right up there with a lot of um, good paid VPS providers. So excellent uh, result using Webinly combined with the Oracle free tier. So that pretty much wraps it up. Hopefully you've got your server up and running. If not, you want something a little bit easier, check out my Cloudways setup. If you want just managed WordPress hosting, that's very powerful and easy to set up. Check that one out. Also Vulture, if you want self -made managed but completely graphically controlled through Plesk. Um, you can check that one out too. I'll put those videos up here, but thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.